22nd annual All-Star Game, the Midsummer Classic, out here in Milwaukee County Stadium. And the American League leads the National League, 13 victories to the senior second base. The National League had a four-game winning streak until 1954, when the American League came back to win 11-9. Standing out here in Milwaukee this afternoon, the weatherman has been very good to the crowd. And for this big game, the temperature is 70 degrees. The humidity is 64 percent. The wind is out of the northeast, blowing at 14 miles per hour. And here in Milwaukee, that wind comes off Lake Michigan, located east of the ballpark, and is blowing from the left field corner across to the right field corner. If it will help the ball players, it will help the powerful left-handed hitters. Now, the crowd out here this afternoon is expected to reach about 45,500. A holiday atmosphere, and these fans around the state of Wisconsin certainly have supported their Major League Ball Club, the Milwaukee Braves, as they go into action for this game this afternoon. The attendance out here so far for 1955 has been 1,115,148. And for a lot of the fans throughout the state of Wisconsin and surrounding territory, they're getting their first look at some of the great stars of the American League. In describing Milwaukee County Stadium, it is 315 down the right field line, 355 to right center, 402 feet to dead center field, 355 to left center, and 320 down the left field line. A double deck stadium extending down the right and left field foul line, open deck grandstand in the deep right field corner, and open bleachers in left field, left center, and down the right field line. Now here are the starting lineups for this afternoon's colorful attraction for the National League, or for the American League rather, the visiting club this afternoon, managed by Al Lopez, the manager of the Cleveland Indians, Harvey King of the Detroit Tigers at shortstop, Nelson Fox of the Chicago White Sox, at second base. Teddy Williams of the Boston Red Sox in left. Mickey Mantle of the New York Yankees in center field. Yogi Berra of the Yankees will be behind the plate. Al Kaline of the Detroit Tigers in right field. Mickey Vernon of the Washington Nationals at first base. Jim Finnegan of the Kansas City Athletics at third base. And the starting pitcher is the little left-hander from the Chicago White Sox staff, Billy Pierce, who this year has won five, and he has lost six, but his earned run average is a very outstanding 2.11. For the National League All-Stars, managed by Leo DeRosa of the world champion New York Giants, Red Sanding of the St. Louis Cardinals will lead off and play second base. Joe Annis of the Philadelphia Phillies in left. Good Snyder of the Brooklyn Dodgers in center field. Ted Kluzuski of the Cincinnati Redlegs at first base. Eddie Matthews of the Milwaukee Braves at third. John Mueller of the New York Giants will start in right field. Ernie Banks of the Chicago Cubs at shortstop. Del Crandall of the Milwaukee Braves will open up behind the plate. And the starting pitcher, Robin Roberts, the great right-hander of the Philadelphia Phillies, was 113 and lost seven. And his earned run average is 2.82. Roberts is equaling an all-time mark in National in All-Star play as he is starting his fifth All-Star game, which ties the mark set by Lefty Gomez of the New York Yankees. He's appearing in his sixth All-Star Classic. Now, Leo DeRosa, in selecting his lieutenant out here this afternoon, picked Mayo Smith, the freshman manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, and Fred Haney, the skipper of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Al Lopez selected John Gutteridge of the Chicago White Sox, and Tony Cucinello, one of his coaches, with the Cleveland Indians. Running through that all-star lineup once again for the boys who are making more than their first appearance in this dream game, Harvey Keen, who is making his debut in front of his hometown fans as they have not had the chance to watch him play Major League Baseball. 
He went to Lutheran High School right here in Milwaukee. He was a great star at the University of Wisconsin. Harvey Keen is appearing in his second classic. He was selected by the fans across the nation. Joe Crandall, the brave young catcher, is in his second All-Star game. And as we mentioned, Robin Roberts is making a step start, which ties the all-time record for All-Star games, as set by the former great left-hander of the Yankee pitching staff, Lefty Gomez. A lot of great power in both of these lineups. Now the umpires are walking out to our turn plate. Six umpires will watch this game this afternoon. Three from the National and three from the American. Here's the way they line up on the side of the ball game. Al Barlick of the National League will be behind the plate. Hank Thor of the American League at first base. Dusty Boggess of the National League at second base. Bill Summers of the American League will be at third base. Frank Sicori of the National League will be on the right field foul line and Ed Rungy of the American League will be down the left field foul line. At the end of four and one half innings, Bill Summers of the American League, who will start at third base, will switch with the home plate umpire, Al Barlick, of the National League. Now, Leo DeRocher, the manager of the New York Giants, the team that swept through four games, winning the 1954 World Series from the Cleveland Indians, is up at home play with the umpire. Here is Al Lopez, the manager of the Cleveland Indians and the manager of this dream game this afternoon, walking up to our home play also. Leo DeRocher is making more than his first appearance in an all-star classic. As a baseball player in 1936 for the St. Louis Cardinals, in 1938 and 1940, when he was a member of the Brooklyn Dodgers. As a manager, Leo has piloted the 1942, 1948 teams when he was the head of the Brooklyn Dodgers, and in 1952 when he was the manager of the New York Giants. Now both squads are moving out to our template. There will be one minute of silence out here this afternoon in tribute to Arch Ward, the originator of this all-star game, who was buried this morning down in Chicago, Illinois. He died last Saturday morning. I put up this dream game back in 1933 to take part in the Chicago World Fair. It caught on, and it's been going ever since. This is the 22nd annual game. Actually, this is the 23rd year of its existence. Now, the American League squad occupies the third base dugout here at Milwaukee County Stadium. The National League is lined up on the first base side. And we're getting all set for... The presentation of colors out here at the stadium this afternoon. Both fighting pitches are still warming up. Robin Roberts of the Phillies and Billy Pierce of the Chicago White Sox. Marvin Moran, who leads the crowds out here at Milwaukee County Stadium every day and every evening of a game. And the singing of the national anthem is getting set now. Game of the day, play-by-play announcer. We'll do the first four one happenings of this great classic out of this afternoon, Mr. Bob Neal. Thank you very much, Earl Gillespie, and hello, everybody. We're most happy today to be at Milwaukee County Stadium in the beautiful city of Milwaukee. 
And the weatherman, as Earl has told you, has supplied these great baseball fans with a magnificent day. The crowd is an enthusiastic one. They look like uh, the kind of folks who have come out for a picnic. And they're bound to see a great picnic this afternoon. The full course, so to speak, of baseball. Robin Roberts, the right-hander, warming up for the National League over on the right side. The National League players coming out to take their position. And Billy Pierce finishing up his warm-up for the American League. And a great day, a great afternoon for baseball, and we hope that all the excitement that has existed and has prevailed in other games over the years will be with us here today. The National League presenting a power-packed lineup. As Billy Pierce said earlier when we were talking to him before the game, the National League will come up with uh, plenty of big, strong men. And he said, I'm going to try and keep that ball away from him. Billy Pierce, with that left-hand delivery, has a good fastball. He uses the curve. He uses the slider. He occasionally uses a changeup. And Robin Roberts, of course, has that good fastball in the National League. He's coming out now. The American League is wearing the road uniform. They're the visiting team. The National League being the home team here in the Milwaukee Braves Park. And the long trip out to the center field bullpen. The right field foul line, 315 feet. Straight away center field, 402 feet. The left field foul line, 320 feet. There's a short fence running around the outfield. We're just about set to go now as Robin Roberts goes to the mound to take his warm-up pitches. And while we wait for the first batter for the American League, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. WEMP AM and FM Milwaukee, Milwaukee's leading independent station, bringing you 24 hours of continuous music, news, and sports. This is Bob Neal with Earl Gillespie in the Milwaukee County Stadium, the All Star Game of 1955. Robin Roberts on the mound is making his first, uh, his fifth start here in the All Star Classic. He started in 1950, worked three innings and gave up three hits, one run, one earned, one strike on one base on ball. In 1951, worked two innings, gave up four hits, one run. In 1953, gave up only one hit, struck out two, walked one. And in 1954, was set for five hits, four runs, five strikeouts, two bases on balls. So, Robin Roberts, six foot one and a half, 190 pounder, a bonus baby, signed back in 19, uh, let's see, back about seven or eight years ago, born September 30th, 1926. The infield for the National League has Eddie Matthews at third base, Max at short, Shane Deese is at second, Kluzewski at first, Robin Roberts pitching to Harvey Keene. The first pitch of the ball game is a fast ball in the outside corner, strike one. The outfield playing straight away. Eddie Matthews is third base and about two steps back at third and about five steps inside the line. Red Shane Deese is deep at second. The outfield straight away, Duke Snyder looking on. There's a down ball hit the left side by Matthews, out in the left field, the first hit of the ball game. Harvey Keene is a great place hitter, and he picked out the spot there. He put them where they ain't, as the saying goes. Did you see that picture of Harvey's fiance the other day? Well, she's a real beauty, even in a newspaper photograph. Harvey's a good-looking man, a well-groomed one. He keeps that way with the Gillette blue blade and his Gillette razor. I guess we can't all be Harvey Keene, but we can get shaves that are just as clean and just as easy. The first hit of the ball game by Harvey Keene. And Robin Roberts now will stretch and look over at first. Krasuski holding Keene. The pitch to Nellie Fox. High inside, ball one. Charging in was Eddie Matthews, the third base. North Nellie Fox, a little left-hand batter. Fox, of course, is uh, now batting currently in the American League 326. He's got five home runs. He stands deep in the box. He chokes that back. The next pitch, he swings and he fouls one in the lower deck. Out of play. So the count is one ball, one strike to Nellie Fox. The American League has a runner at first base in Harvey Keene. Nobody out. Roberts looks in to Bell Pandle, who's catching for the National League. Fox waiting. Here's the 1-1 delivery from Roberts, and it's on the inside corner for a strike. One ball, two strikes. As Nellie Fox took a third ball on the inside corner about belt high. Deep in right field, Don Mueller for the National League. Duke Snyder stayed away in center field, and is playing shallow and left. The 1-2 pitch, swung on, and hit foul, going in the lower deck out in the left field. So the American League has little Nellie Fox, who is certainly one of the best second basemen in baseball today. Nellie has that left foot right back over the restraining line as deep as he can go. Looks out to Robin Roberts, who's ready. The 1-2 pitch is inside in the dirt. And Sandal uh, off for the match, ready to throw down a first base and back safely is Harvey Keene. Keene made no effort to go down to second. And Nellie Fox very wisely put his arm up, acted as the police officer said, don't move. And Harvey Keene stayed right at first base. Don Gutridge of the Chicago White Sox is coaching at first base for the American League with Tony Cucinello, the Cleveland Indians, coaching at third. 
Robin Roberts now looking in to Crandall get his time. Another shot steps back in. Harvey Keene is on at first. Two balls, two strikes to count. Nobody out. Here's the 2-2 pitch. It's swung on. A little blooper. Going out in the right field. Going to drop in there for a base hit. Keene makes the third of second. Going on the third. Here's Neil with three coming in. It's cut off by Keene D. And the American League has a run at third and first. Nobody out. is for Ted Williams, batting in the number three spot for the American League. Ted is currently hitting 394 in the American League race. He's only been in 29 games, has 12 home runs. In the All-Star Classic, well, Ted is almost the senior partner of the American League. Low outside, fastball by Robin Roberts to Ted Williams, taken for ball one. The American League has Harvey Keene at third base. Nelly Fox is on at first. The infield is in on the left side. Brzezinski holding to the inside, trying to keep Nelly close. The next pitch, Williams takes the fastball on the outside corner for strike one. One ball, one strike. The outfield is pulled to the right, and there's a pitcher warming in the National League bullpen, the left-hander. And the right-hander, Don Newcomb, gets up and starts to work also. Newcomb and Haddock working for the National League. The next pitch to Ted Williams is low outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Big Ted, the left-hand batter. Has really been a great star in the All Star Classic. There isn't much you can say that hasn't been said about him. Takes and it gets bounces off the uh, back of the plate and gets away from Del Cano. Here's Keen coming in to score. Fox makes the turn and second goes back. And we'll have to check to see whether the ruling will be a pass ball or a wild pitch. It's charged as a wild pitch. And the American League scores. With Harvey Keene coming in from third base as the pitch was in the dirt and rolled all the way back to the backstop. Nelly Fox is on at second base. Nobody out. American League now leading one to nothing. Ted Williams the batter. Three balls, one strike. Robert Trey looks at Fox. Here's the pitch outside for ball four. And Williams draws the base on ball. So the first walk of the ball game. As the nature to Ted Williams. And batting in the number four spot for the American League is Mickey Mantle, a center fielder for the New York Yankees. Went into today's uh, game uh, carrying a 318 batting average from his American League pace so far. Mickey batting in the number four spot. First pitch, swings, and misses first strike. Mickey is appearing in his fourth All Star game. He did not play in the 52 series, starting 53 54. And he can really push that bat. That's from both sides. Here's the next pitch. Outside. Takes it for a ball. One ball, one strike. Mickey batting left-handed against the right-handed slants of Robin Roberts. And the American League leads one to nothing. With Nelson Fox is on at second base. Ted Williams on at first. Roberts takes his touch. Looks at his runners. Here's the pitch in the mantle. He swings and has a drive deep in the center field. Going back for the sixth matter. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. With a three run home run, hit out over the center field fence about 420 feet away. And in the center field, uh, back of the center field fence, third away center field, the Milwaukee Braves have about 20 or 30 beautiful evergreens placed there for the batters to hit again. So there's nobody out. The American League leads four to nothing. Robert pitching the Ogden Bar gets outside and low for ball one. So Robin Roberts has given up three hits so far. One is a tremendous home run by Mickey Mantle. Next pitch to bat. Foul back on the screen. Just the last bounces away. One ball, one strike. Too bad Earl hasn't got his big nut he uses here. We're going to hand ourselves a souvenir. Mickey Mantle putting the American League ahead. Four to nothing. Here's the pitch to Barry. Swings and has a slice into left. Taken belt high by Del Ennis. For out number one. So the first out... In the top half of the first inning, is reported as uh, Yogi Barra lines out to Del Ennis and left field. One away, and the batter is stepping in. Is the number six batter in the American League lineup, Al Kaline of the Detroit Tigers. This sensational young rookie 
is batting 268 in the American League race of 19 home runs. And the first pitch from Robert Roberts, a fastball, swung on a miss for strike one. Al Keyline was not born when the first All-Star game was played. And he will be in the right uh, field section for the American League when they take the field. The next pitch blow out tied by Robin Roberts. One ball, one strike. One out. Nobody on. And the American League leads 4 to nothing when in the top half of the first inning. Bill Crandall working back to the plate. The outfield carried around just a little to the left of Keyline. He takes and it's a fastball in the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Al Keyline of the Detroit Tigers, who jumped right from high school into... Major League Baseball with the Detroit Tigers. Stands deep in the back, right hand batter, slow stamp. Next pitch by Roberts, he swings the ground ball, hits to Eddie Matthews, the third baseman, long throw. He's got it, out number two. <laughs> so there's two out in the top half of the first inning. The American League leading four to nothing. And the number seven batter in the American League lineup, left hand batting Mickey Vernon. Mickey brought from his Washington effort so far this year, a 275 batting average. Checks his swing, takes low inside, ball one. Robin Roberts has faced six batters so far, has given up three hits. Has committed the wild pitch and a home run, given up to Mickey Mantle. A swing and a miss by Mickey Vernon, one ball, one strike to count, two out. Nobody on, and the outfield swing straight away. Deep at first base is Ted Kuzuki, Red Chain Beast, the second baseman, halfway between first and second on the guard. Next pitch, on the outside corner, first strike. One ball, two strikes. Umpire Al Bollock of the National League leaves no doubt in anybody's mind as to whether it's a ball or a strike. Here's the one-two delivery. Swung on, and a fly ball hit in the center field. Luke Snyder comes in three steps, wait, he's got it. And that's all for the American League in the top half of the first inning. Well, for the American League, four runs from three hits. There were no errors. Nobody left on. And at the end of the first half inning, the score, American League, four. The National League, nothing. Well, the National League now will try to do something about that four-run lead the American League put in the top half of the first inning. And uh, leading off for the National League is Red Chandy the second baseman. Red is currently batting 296 in his National League pursuit. He has 10 home runs. He has two hits and 13 times a bat in the all-star classic. Billy Pierce, the left hand, is ready, and there's a fine drive out in the right center field, curving over to our K-line for a base hit. So Shandy opens the National League half of the first inning with a line drive to right center field. And uh, the fans here in Milwaukee, even though this game has only progressed to the last half of the first inning, have received surely more than their money's worth already with the big base hits that have started to flow off the bats of both the United and National Leaguers. The four runs scored by the American League in the top half of the first inning ties the all-time scoring for a first inning also made by the American League in 1949. The next batter is Del Ennis, who is the left fielder, and he's from the Philadelphia Phillies, and he takes on the outside corner from Billy Pierce Little two on that side side for ball one. The outfield playing straight away. Mickey Mantle has moved over a few steps in left center field. This is the left side of the infield. Next pitch, one on, fouled, out of play in the lower deck. And it's one ball, one strike. Red Chandy on at first base. Number 14, Del Ennis stepping back in. Jim Finnegan is at third. Harvey Keene at short. Nelly Fox at second. Mickey Vernon at first for the American League. Pierce is ready. Next pitch, the fastball, the top's inside. Going down to second, and Shane Deese is through by Bella. The tag is made by Fox, and Shane Deese is out of second. The ball, which popped out of Yogi Barra's mid out in front of the plate, had Shane Deese thinking he could make it into second base. He started down, but Barra popped that ball down to Nelly Fox, who came into cover, and they get Shane Deese going into second base. So there's one out now for the National League. The runner is removed. The count is two balls, one strike to the batter. Del Ennis, right-hand batter, stands deep, feet fairly close together, looking out to Billy Pierce. Next pitch, swung on, foul back. So the count is two balls, two strikes. This is the last half of the first inning. The All-Star game of 1955 with the American League holding a 4 to nothing lead. 
The Nash White batting. One out, two balls, two strikes for Santa Delanis. On deck is Duke Snyder of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Billy Pierce, the left hander, ready to work. The left hand comes around. He swings over it, drops in, but makes the toss down to burn at first base. So there's two outs. And the batter now is Duke Snyder, the great center fielder of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Duke is batting 319 in the National League race, has 28 home runs. The National League is, as a team, have hit 142 home runs so far this year in the pursuit of their pennant in the senior league. Snyder, very close stance, left-hand batter against the left-hand pitcher. Swings and misses. He was looking for one way out there that time. One strike to count as Billy Pierce came in with that good slider. Mickey Mantle playing deep in center field, deep in right. It's Al Kaline of the Detroit Tigers. Dead Williams around and left. Right side of the infield for the American League is deep, but Fox deep at second. Here's the pitch. It's the curve that breaks not too much inside, and it's ball one strike one. Pitch started at Duke Snyder. He pulled away, but it failed to break enough to catch the corner. Big Ted Klazuski, the man of muscles, on deck now for the National League. Here's the 1-1 delivery by Pierce Hung on. Slow roller foul down the first base line. Mayo Smith coaching for the National League at first base receives that one. And Fred Haney, the manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates, is coaching at third. Both are making their initial appearances in all-star games. Mayo sent every year but one of his career in baseball in the minor league. And, of course, Fred uh, never had the opportunity to play in an all-star game. Outfield straight away. Here's the one-two delivery from Billy Pierce. The fastball, set free call. So, in the last half of the first inning for the National League, no runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left on. And at the end of the first inning, there is no uh, score for the National League and four big runs for the American League. So, the American League League, four to nothing at the end of one. As Earl Gillespie told you earlier, the weather as provided here today in the wonderful state of Wisconsin is ideal for baseball. The temperature, 70 degrees. The humidity, 64%. And the wind is out of the northeast, 14 miles an hour, which means that a very light summer zephyr is blowing really across from left to right field. And looking out as far as you can see to every corner of this beautiful stadium, are uh, the great fans from Milwaukee and from surrounding cities and from the baseball centers of the world. And we have a great many representatives from other countries around the world. We're delighted to see them here today. And up on top of the hill, way up on top of the hill, is the Wood Memorial Hospital, Mr. Earl. And uh, the veterans up there have their own special bleachers, and we're delighted to see them turning out here today where they can see this game. And to the veterans all over the world, we salute them and send them along our very best greetings. We're going into the top half of the fifth inning. Leading off is the leadoff batter for the American League, Harvey Keen. Harvey has one hit and two times at bat. Harvey Haddock coming on. First pitch. Pass ball. Through the middle. Strike one. So, you, uh, I'm sure, have put Sam Musial in left field, replacing Del Ennis. Ready to work is the one strike pitch is low for ball one. One and one. Four runs, five hits, no errors for the American League. No runs, one hit, one error for the National League. And we're in the top half of the fifth inning. Harvey Keen, right hand batter, close stance, left foot pointed right at that plate. Swings and tops the roller down to third base. And Matthews waits. He pumps it over the first base and with a great stretch, Krasinski got him. So a long stretch by Ted Krasinski on a top roller hit by Harvey Keen that, had, that Eddie Matthews had to wait for. And we have one out in the top of the fifth. The batter now is Nellie Fox. Nellie has one hit and two times at bat. He singled in the first inning. And he lines the red candy in the second inning. He's a left-hand batter. Harvey Haddock, the left-hander, is on the mound for the Nash League. Into his windup, the left arm comes around. A curveball, outside, low, ball one. In close is Eddie Matthews at third base. The outfield is shallow in left and center. Ted Kuzuski playing back about nine steps in the bag, about three steps off the line at first base. Here's the pitch. It's inside, taken by Nellie Fox. Two balls to count. 
Two and nothing to count. One out. And back to Ted Williams. Fox checking that bat about three inches from the handle. Looks out as the left hander starts to work. Here's the pitch on the outside corner. Curveball, strike one. Two balls, one strike. Harvey Haddock, who has very good control and has a good curveball, really breaking that curve off to the American Leaguers. Then outside of the four runs scored by the American League in the first inning, they have not threatened since. A little popper hit by Nelly Fox over near the stands and dropped out of play. Eddie Matthews had come over, but he couldn't quite get to it. So it is two balls, two strikes to Nelly Fox. In that first inning, in case you've joined us late, Harvey Keene led off with a single, Nelly Fox followed with a single, and then Robin Roberts, with a wild pitch, brought Keene in, Williams then walked, and then Mantle hit a home run. There's a line drive hit back to second, going over to Shane Lee, takes the four, and hit it to play. Ball was hit by the pitcher, Harvey Haddock. Red Shane Lee moved far to his right, back to second, got the ball, and got it over to first base in time for the play. And uh, the ball apparently was nicked or touched by the pitcher, Harvey Haddock, so if you're starting with us, it goes one, four, three. Here's Ted Williams up, and the nice league moves the outfield around the right. Deep at second base is Shane He's playing about two steps out on the edge of the outfield grass. First pitch by Haddock, the left-hander, is a fastball outside and low, ball one. Eddie Matthews moves in. He's about two steps off the edge of the infield grass at third base. Duke Snyder in center field has moved over in the right center field. Kozuski is playing one step off the line and deep at first. And we're ready to go. Here's the one ball pitch to Ted Williams, the curve that breaks a little low. Over the plate, but low, and it's ball two. Two out, top of the fifth. The American League lead, four to nothing. Paddock looks in, the crown will get his sign. Williams pumping that bat. Here's the pitch, and it's a swing and a miss by Ted Williams. Two balls, one strike. Balls, one strike now to Ted Williams. Ted has a single and a walk, so he has a perfect day so far. Here's a two-one pitch. It's low, a fastball, ball three, three and one to Williams. Ted would love to stroke one out there in the right center field bleachers. Harvey Haddock is just determined that he won't. Side arm and a ground ball hit back to the mound. Haddock lets him run. Pumps the ball over to Plazewski. And that's all for Ted Williams and all for the American League in the first inning. And the play goes one free. No run, no hit, no errors, and nobody left on. At the end of four and a half innings of play, the score, American League four, the National League nothing. Well, it's my very good fortune and pleasure now to introduce you to the young man who broadcast the Milwaukee Braves games and who will carry on for the second half of this all-star game, Earl Gillespie. Thank you very much, Bob Neal. In the last half of the fifth inning, the National League sends up Ted Kluzewski, Eddie Matthews, and Don Mueller, three left-handed batters in a row to face the Cleveland Indian Ace, early win, a right-handed thrower. Now, the National League in the first four innings have just gone around five for the court as they sent up only 12 men in the first four innings, despite a base hit by the leadoff man, second baseman Red Shandy, in the first inning. That's the red side to go to second base, and a ball drop of the catcher Yogi Berra, and Berra right from a good throw out to Nelly Fox at second base, and Shandy was cut down. So for the first four innings, the National League has been three up and three down. Only Shandy has reached first base safely. And the highly talented pitching staff, as selected by the American League managers, so far, it's paid off out here at Milwaukee County Stadium. Kruzowski, the powerfully built first baseman of the Cincinnati Redlegs, is standing outside the batter's box. Kluh is first time up facing Billy Pierce, the fine little left-hander from the Chicago White Sox staff, popped out to the shortstop, Harvey Keen. The outfield still leads the same for the American League. Teddy Williams in left, Mickey Mantle in center field, and Al Kaline in right. Jim Finnegan is at third base. Harvey Keene at short, Nelly Fox at second base, and Mickey Vernon at first. Early win, the second pitcher used by manager Al Lopez, came out of the fourth inning and had no trouble with Shane Dean, Sam Musial, or Duke Snyder. 
Yogi Berra is still behind the plate. We have the change man, the umpires, as Bill Summers of the American League switches with Al Barnick. And Summers comes down to home plate to call the balls and strikes. Barnick moves down to the third base line. 4 nothing. the American League leads on the tremendous 420-foot home run by Mickey Mantle, a three-run blast. After the American Leaguers had gotten off to a one nothing lead in the first inning on a wild pitch by Robin Roberts, Mickey stepped there and found one over the garden gate out in deep center field near the huge fir trees which formed the background for these hitters out here at Milwaukee County Stadium. Here is Ted Klazuski, ready to step in the batter's box. The outfield plays him just about straight away. Now the second base for Nelly Fox moving over to his left a couple of steps. First base for Mickey Vernon is deep and Clue gets ready. Early win, starts with the walking motion. The first pitch to Clue. Here's a ball at time. Ball one, no strike. Nobody on base and nobody out. The National League trailing 4 nothing in the last half of the fifth inning. Win looks down at Yogi Berra. That's the rocking motion. Up comes the left leg. Down with the pitch. The one nothing pitch is a tight. The slider was on the outside corner across the letters. So it's even up at ball one and strike one on Kluzowski. A great football star at Indiana University. Ball one and strike one. Here's the one one pitch. And Kluz takes that show of beauty right down the alley. And it's one and two. Ball one, strike two. Haney of the Pittsburgh Pirates is coaching at third base. Mayo Smith, the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, over at first base. All one and strike two on the number four hitter in the National League batting order. Ted Kluzowski, the one-two pitch, ten on line down the left field line and say foul ball. It's one and two. We pause ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. W-E-M-P, A-M and F-M, Milwaukee, the 1250 spot in your dial, bringing you 24 hours of continuous music, news, and sports. A ball one, strike two count on Ted Kluzowski. Big Ted leading off in the last half of the fifth inning. Four nothing, the American League out in front. Wins pitch, is swung on line in the right field for the base Down deep in the right field corner, crew around first base. He might try for two, here's the tag and it's going to be close. He is safe at second base. Ted Kluzowski lines the double down deep in the right field corner, bouncing against the wall, 315 feet from home plate. And there is the first base hit for the National League to save these sloping singles to right center field in the first inning. Now here is the hero of the many Wisconsin fans here this afternoon. The brave third baseman Eddie Matthews. His first time up, he fouled off the third baseman Jim Finnegan. Matthews, 23 years old. Hitting now the teammate on second base, Ted Kluzowski, and the nobody out. Win pitch is swung on next to the strike one. Strike one count. Ted Kluzowski's double down the right field line. Hit number two for the National League. The American League has four runs on five hits. The National League, no runs and two hits. Outfield deep, shaded slightly towards right, so the infield deep. When the right-hander delivers, the pitch is high, and it's even up at ball one and strike one. Ball one and strike one on Eddie Matthews with the right fielder, Don Mueller, down to one knee off to the right of home plate. Mueller of the New York Giants. Ball one, strike one. Early win, as his side goes to work. The pitch is swung on a mess, and it's ball one and strike two. Matthews cutting at a pitch up around his shoulders. The National League, so far, throughout the first four innings of play, has not come up with a ground ball. I mean, uh, they have not hit a ground ball. There's a one and two pitch. They swing on a high fly ball. Hit back in the short right field. Nelly Fox going back. Nelly is calling for waving his arms. Now the right fielder is calling. And Kaline makes the catch. The peg back across the infield is taken by third baseman Jim Finnegan. Eddie Matthews flies to Kaline. Detroit sensational youngster along the right field foul line. 
So that's one away, and it brings up the right fielder, John Mueller, with a runner in scoring position on second base. Mueller, in the second, facing the left hander Billy Pierce, fouled out to Finnegan, down the third base line. Here is a guy with a magic eye. A great stroke hitter, he hits equally as well to left field as he does to right. Chokes up around four inches on his bat. Outfield is playing down just about straight away. Mueller. Working with Ted Krasuski on second base. Early win delivers. The pitch is high and outside. It's 4 1. The shortstop of the Chicago Cubs, Ernie Banks. Kneeling down in the on deck circle. And now big John Newcomb of the Brooklyn Dodgers begins loosening up in the right center field bullpen. John Newcomb, that's for right hander. 4 1 and no strikes. Eddie Wynn delivers. The pitch is low and it's ball two, two and nothing. We are playing in the last half of the fifth inning. The American League leads the National League 4 0 in the 22nd annual All Star game. Cincinnati's Klazuski leads off second base. One man is out. A ball two, no strike count on the Giants' right fielder, Don Mueller. Heading for the National League. He swings and pulls one foul down the right field line. And that time, John Mueller offered an inside curveball. Pulling it foul. And it's ball two and strike one. Infield is just about spread away. Keen is deep and short. Ball two and strike one. The pitch is swung on. There's a line drive left field for a base hit. Luzowski makes the turn. He's going to hold up at third base. There's a take off by Jim Finnegan. William Stroll has come off by Finnegan as the National Leaguers now place runners on first and third base. And it's hit number two off early win and the third base hit for the Nationals. As John Mueller slumps that ball over the shortstop to the left field, it brings up the shortstop Ernie Banks. Braves, a sophomore in National League play, runs for the New York Giants, Don Mueller at first base. So the Nationals now have Kozuski on third and Henry Aaron on first base. Here is Ernie Banks, the pitch at 4-1. Now Banks just recently set a National League record for home runs for shortstops with his 23rd of the season. Outfield plays him deep and slightly towards left. Bob Turley and Billy Heff begin listing up in the bullpen for the American League. Ball one, no strikes. Wind pitch. A curve sweeps outside. It's ball two, two and nothing. Early win. One of the real mainstays of Al Lopez, American League Cleveland Indians. And a little bit of a jam now as the National League tries to get back into the game with the Americans leading four nothing, playing in the last half of inning number five. Runners leading off first and third base. One man is out. The pitch to Ernie Banks. There's swung on and foul back up the screen towards the press box. And it's ball two, strike one. Ernie Banks with a strikeout, the victim in the third inning. Going down against Billy Pierce. Pierce worked three brilliant innings for the American League. Facing only nine men in the three innings in which he worked. He allowed only one hit, and he struck out three. Walked nobody. Red Shaning, the only man to get on base off early, or rather off Billy Pierce. Kozowski on third base. Henry Aaron on first base. One man is out. The 2-1 pitch. A swing and a miss. And it's even up at ball two, strike two. And that time it looked as though Banks was fooled as he cut late on a fastball. Ball two, strike two. The American League outfield swung around towards left field on the power-hitting shortstop, Ernie Banks. He has a very deceptive build when you call him a power hitter. There's a high pop-up. That's twisting foul down the third base line. Yogi Berra under makes the catch. Ernie Banks falls out to the catch of Yogi Berra. It brings up a pinch batter. Smokey Burgess comes out of the dugout waving a couple of bats around. Smokey Burgess of Cincinnati. Five foot eight. 180-pounder from North Carolina. 
from the top hitters in the senior circuit of 1954. Smokey Burgess, this year, with Cincinnati, is batting 313. He has 10 home runs, and he has driven in 32 runs. He began the 1955 season with the Philadelphia Phillies. Was involved in a six-player trade. Three players going to Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. Three moving over to Crosley Field. So here is Smokey Burgess, a left-handed batter. And he steps up there with a chance to help the National League break the ice as they trail 4 nothing with runners on first and third base. Early wins first six. They swing a ground ball to the second base and right Fox over, picks it up, throws, steps on second base. He was trying to throw the team, realized he was near the bag, raced across, stepped on it for the force play. And now he tires the side here in the last half of the fifth inning. No runs and two hits. No errors, two men the left on base. So at the end of five innings of play, the score is 4 nothing. John Newcomb is still loosening up in the right center field bullpen here at Milwaukee County Stadium. And I'll bet that the Dodger manager, Walter Ralston, is sitting on the edge of his seat. Harvey Haddix. The left-hander of the St. Louis Cardinal pitching staff is still in the mound. Smokey Burgess now replaces Joe Crandall, for whom he batted behind the plate. Willie Mays is out in center field. Johnny Logan is at short. Henry Aaron is playing right field. Now quickly the outfield for the National League. Stan Musial in left. Willie Mays in center field. Henry Aaron in right. Eddie Matthews at third base. Johnny Logan of the Milwaukee Braves is at short. Red Shandings is still the second baseman. And Ted Klazowski is at first. Smokey Burgess behind the plate. And Harvey the Kitten Haddock is on the mound. In the top half of the sixth inning, the American League sends up Mickey Mantle, who is batting right-hander for the first time this afternoon. The first pitch to Mickey is high for a ball. As a left-handed swinger, he switches. He belted a three-run homer in the first inning and fly to center field in the third off starter Robin Roberts. Mickey Mano. Haddock's next pitch. Swung out and hit foul down the third baseline. It's even up at ball one and strike one. Here is the attendance for this 1955 Major League All-Star team. 45,314. Haddock looks down at Smokey Burgess. Nobody on base and nobody off. The first of the pitch is swung on. Here's a high foul that might be in play. Matthews drifting over towards the third base box seat. It's up about five rows. No play, and it's 4 1 and strike two. Mantle, Barra, and Kaline. They'll be the first three men to face Haddock here in the first half of the sixth inning. And the Americans leading the Nationals 4 0. The American League leads in the long series, 13 victories to the National Eight. Haddock's one-two pitch, swung on it to the shortstop Johnny Logan. Nice hop, the take over the first base, he is out, and it's one away. Johnny Logan to Ted Kuzuski, Mickey Mantle is retired. And it brings up the catcher, Yogi Berra. Berra against Robin Roberts, lying to the left fielder, Del Ennis, and then hit into a double play. Klazowski to Banks to the pitcher Roberts covering at first base. That happened in the third. So here is Barra, 0 for 2. Batting with one out and nobody on base in the top half of the sixth inning. Haddock's first pitch, curve, misses outside, it's 4 1. The outfield is shading Barra slightly towards right. 4 1, no strikes. One out, nobody on base. The four scored by the American League in the first inning looms larger as the game goes on. Here is a swing and a high foul ball that's going to be out of play on the first base side. And it's even up at ball one and strike one. New baseball goes out to Harvey Haddix. 
He was nicknamed the Chitten because of his resemblance to Harry the Cat Routine in his pitching motions. Former great star with the St. Louis Cardinal pitching staff, and Haddock's lost a different baseball. 4 1 and strike one on Yogi Berra with one out of nobody on base. First half of the sixth inning. American League, four runs on five hits. The National League, no runs on three hits. One error has been com- uh, committed by the National League. The wind up in the 1 1 pitch, a curve is over his head, and it's ball two. Yogi Berra, left handed batter. Facing the south for all, Harvey Haddix. Don Newcomb, who has been loosening up, has finished his warm-ups. Out there in the right center field bullpen. Here is the wind-up on the 2-1 pitch. A swing and a ground ball. It's going to be in the hole in the right field for a base hit. Hard ground ball between Klazowski and Shane Beans. And that is hit number six for the American League. Hit number two off the pitching of Harvey Haddix. Haddix in his third inning. In the first two innings, allowed no runs. One hit a single to center field by the first baseman of Washington, Mickey Vernon. Right fielder Al Kaline in the batter's box. Kaline is grounded off the third base, and he has gone down swinging. First pitch, Kaline swings, lanes one off Eddie Matthews, passing in the left center field. Here is the runner running second base on his way to third now, and Kaline digs for second base. The throw is not in time. And it's going to be scored as a double off the left side of Betty Matthews. That ball is hit like a bullet. Might have hit him on the arm as Eddie looks down along the left wrist. And he holds now, places the right hand over the left wrist. Hard smash, one skip off the arm of Betty Matthews. Cams off in the left center field for two bases. Runners on second and third base. One man is out and Haddix is in trouble. The American League has Yogi Berra on third base, Al Kaline on second base. The batter is first baseman Mickey Vernon. The National League infield moves in for a play at the plate. Outfield stations itself straight away as Vernon, the southpaw swinger, waits. The first pitch, curve, strike. Vernon fly to center field in the first inning. Single to center field in the fourth inning off Haddock. And Mickey would like to trade that face hit for one right now. As he stands in there with runners on second and third base in scoring position. Haddock's ready, delivers. The pitch is swung out and missed, and it's strike two. Ren in that time waves at a curveball that broke down and away from the left handed batter. A strike two count. One man is out. The score American League four, the National League nothing. Top half of the sixth inning. Haddock pulls his cap down. Strike two count. Harvey into the rocking motion. Up goes the right leg. The nothing and two pitches way outside for a ball. It's one and two. Smokey Bird just looked Yogi Berra back in the third base. Yogi taking a big lead at third. Al Kaline is on second base. That was Al's first base hit. That double off the left arm of Eddie Matthews, and it gives him one for three. His first all star classic, Al Kaline. Sophomore in the American League with the Detroit Tigers. Ball one and strike two. The one and two pitch swung out here as a foul by a ball back towards us. And bouncing in the boot right next to us. And out it goes. Ball one and strike two. A big net extends from down behind home plate up right to the level, almost to the level of the radio booth and the press box here at Milwaukee County Stadium. And while working games here during the summer, we have a big fish net in which we catch these foul balls and send them out to youngsters along our network. Runners on second and third base. The one and two pitch is inside. It backs him away, and it's even up at two and two. Ball two, strike two. One man is out. Neil Zeal in left field. Willie Mays in the lineup for the first time this afternoon. is playing center field, replacing Duke Snyder. And Henry Aaron is in right field. The National League infield is playing in for a play at the plate with American Leaguers on second and third base. The 2-2 pitch swung on as a ground ball to the first baseman. Runner scoring, and the play has to be at first base. He tags the runner, Vernon, and on the play, Barra scores run number five for the American League. Al Kaline moves over to third base. That was a chopping, a chopper down that first baseline. Not hit too hard, and Klazuski had no chance for a play at the plate. 
So Vernon drives in a run. <laughs> and a ground ball to Ted Kuzuski. He'll tag them about five feet from first base. The score is now 5 nothing, And here is third baseman Jim Finnegan. As yet, manager Al Lopez has not made a change in his starting lineup. Runner on third base, two outs. First pitch, Finnegan takes the strike. Finnegan has been up twice against Roberts, who was safe on an error, on an error by the third baseman Eddie Matthews. In the fourth inning off Harvey Haddix, he was thrown out by Matthews, so he has nothing for two. Outfield playing around to the left now for Jim Finnegan of Kansas City. The pitch, a swing and a line, and it's going to trick foul down the first base line. It's strike two. A right-handed batter hitting that ball down the right field line. It's a slicing ball, and that one hit foul about ten feet. Al Kaline on third base, two outs, one run across the plate. First half of the sixth inning, the American League five. And now the National League trails 5 nothing. Finnegan deep in the batter's box, a very pronounced closed staff, or stance rather. Here is a swing and a miss, and Haddock struck him out. There is strikeout number two for Harvey Haddock in the sixth inning. One run, two hits, no errors. One man was left on base. The score, the American League 5, the National League nothing. You know, this boy Willie Mays really loves the game. Seems like he just can't get enough baseball. Why, he even plays stick ball with the kids where he lives. He's got away with them and the Roller Brothers. They look up to him. When he tells them to keep clean shaven, they'll take it from him. Willie believes that when a man looks right, he feels right. He says... Get yourself a Gillette razor. That's what he uses. We have a change in the National League lineup. Ransom Jackson of the Chicago Cubs is now playing third base in place of Eddie Matthews. And big John Newcomb takes the long walk from the right center field bullpen towards the mound. John Newcomb, one of the real reasons why those Brooklyn Dodgers have a big 11 and a half game lead over the uh, second place National League club at All-Star side. Newcomb has a phenomenal record of 14 victories, only one loss, and his earned run average is 2.93. Now by inserting Newcomb into the National League lineup, Leo DeRocher not only helps his mound core, but he helps the power at the plate because he also is having a great year up at home plate. Vic Power is swinging a couple of bats around, and Power is going to hit for the pitcher early win. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. WEMP AM and FM, Milwaukee, 5,000 watts of better listening, Wisconsin's most powerful music, news, and sports station. Milwaukee County Stadium, Earl Gillespie, along with Bob Neal, Vic Power, Chico Carrasquel, and Bobby Avila will be the first three men to face Big John Newcomb. Harvey Haddock worked three innings. He allowed one run on three hits, struck out two, and he walked nobody. First pitch to Vic Power is swung on as they pop up down the first baseline. Kluzuki's being called. Ted makes the catch and it's one out. Power, a 3-0 six hitter at Kansas City, goes after the first pitch and pops out to Ted Kluzuki. Brings up the shortstop, the great defensive shortstop of the Chicago White Sox, Chico Carrasquel who's batting a 255 with six home runs and 23 runs batted in. The first pitch, here's a swing and a high foul up into the upper deck behind home plate, and it's strike one. We play in the top half of the seventh inning. Five nothing, the American League leads the National League. The Americans have five runs on seven hits. The Nationals, no runs, only four hits. 
Outfield, deep towards left then. Chico Carrasquel. The pitch swung on hit. A base hit down the third baseline. Might go for two. Chico digs around first base and he's going to put on the brakes. Here's the peg in from the left fielder. Samuel Zeal to his teammate at St. Louis, Red Shandine. A single for Chico Carrasquel who replaced Harvey Keene. Harvey, in his second All-Star game, came up with one hit and three trips. Batter is second baseman Bobby Avila, the American League's batting champion in 1954. Right-handed batter facing John Newcomb. Runner on first base, one man is out. The pitch is swung on. Here's a foul ball that's going to be out of play and it's like one. Carrasquel on first base. And his base hit was number eight for the American League. Into the stretch, Newcomb. Outfield around the left on Bobby Avila. The pitch, he was going to bump out of Cobina, was inside for a ball, so it's even up at one and one. Bobby Avila found Ransom Jackson playing deep at third base. Gonna drop, uh, try to drop one down that third base line and beat it out, but it was inside. It's ball one, strike one. Here is the one one pitch. Swung out and foul back into the crowd behind home plate, and now it's one and two. Avila this year for the Cleveland Indians is batting a 272 with five home runs and 32 runs batted in. Making his first appearance. This afternoon, all one and strike two. One man is out. Chico Carrasquel at first base. Newcomb has the sign. The outfield, around to the left, throws the infield, the pitch. There's a strike and a beauty. He's called out on strike. And that's strikeout number one for John Newcomb. Bobby Avila's call out on strike that brings up the left fielder, Teddy Williams. For many people out here this afternoon, they get their first look at Williams in action. Teddy has walked, single to center field, and bounced out to the pitcher. One for two. The pitch is a spike on the outside corner of the knees. A lanky built, left-handed batter with tremendous power. One of the great hitters of our time. Of any time. And now they're going into a Williams ship with Johnny Logan moving over to the right side of second base. Along with Red Shandine. Shandine's moves back in the grass in short right field. A strike one count. Two outs. Runner on first base. The pitch is swung on. High fly ball deep into right center field. Packing up is Willie Mays. He's there. He leaps. He makes a sensational catch. Field for the American League and also on the mound. Al Smith of the Cleveland Indians is now in left field replacing Teddy Williams and Whitey Ford. Southpaw of the New York Yankee pitching staff moves in from the bullpen. He replaces Ernie Wynn who went three innings, allowed no runs, gave up three hits, a double to Ted Klazuski, a single to John Mueller, and a pinch hit single to Gil Hodges. He struck out one, and he walked nobody. 
in the last half of the seventh inning with a great part of this what you might call a partisan crowd because Milwaukee, of course, is a National League town taking the seventh inning stretch. Willie Mays will lead off. He'll be followed by Ted Klazowski and then Ransom Jackson. The manager of the New York Yankees, Casey Stengel, down here along the third base side, watching now one of his own batteries, Whitey Ford and Yogi Berra. Whitey Ford this year has one ten in his last four. His earned run average is a very fine 2.69. He has worked in 21 ball games. Willie Mays. In the batter's box now, here is the wind-up on the first pitch by Whitey Ford. It's high for a ball. Willie has come to life in the last two weeks of National League play. He's been building a lot of home runs. And last year, he is well remembered for his sensational play in the first game of the 1954 World Series. There's a swing and a line drive, the left field, for a base hit for Willie Mays. He makes the turn at first base, and he's going to hold up. Willie Mays singles the left field for hit number five for the National League, number one off Whitey Ford. First baseman Ted Klazuski is the hitter. Ted off Billy Pierce, popped out the short, and against Ernie Wynn, doubles down the right field line, so Big Ted has one for two. Batting now is Willie Mays on first base. The National League really has its work cut out this afternoon as it trails 5-0 in the last half of the seventh. Here's the ball that's outside. Ball one and no strike. Only two of the past 21 games have resulted in shutouts. One for the National League and one for the American League. Ball one, no strikes. Ford's pitch is a spike on the inside corner knee high to Klazuski, and it's even up on Ted at one and one. Ball one, strike one. The stretch, the pitch. Way inside. Clue back the way, ball two. Willie Mays on first base with a base hit. In National League play, has 27 home runs. Ranking third behind Klazuski with 29. And Duke Snyder with 28. He has driven in 64 runs. He was batting, he is batting at 298. Klazuski, the pitch. A swing and a drive back in the short right center field. Coming over in the dead run now is the center fielder. He makes the catch. Mickey Mantle. Takes over to first base, and Willie is back just in time. Willie Mays gambling that time, taking a big lead. Was forced to hustle back in the first base as Mickey Mantle, racing around to his left over towards right center field, made a good running catch on a lazy fly ball to short right center, and it's one out. Now from the Chicago Cubs, the third baseman, Ransom Jackson, Ransom in regular season play, hitting at 253. He has 14 home runs, 41 runs batted in. Ransom Jackson replacing Eddie Matthews at third base for the National League. Takes Hine inside, ball one. Matthews this afternoon fouled out to third base and he flied to right field, so Eddie finished with nothing for two. Ball one, no strikes, one out. Willie Mays on first base, the pitch. There's a swing and a drive in the right center field. Mantle coming around to his left now, calling for it. He makes the catch, and this time he's not going to try to get Willie, who again had that big lead at first base. Play comes into Bobby Avila at second base. Now the big round of applause is for one of the local boys here, the Milwaukee Braves right fielder, Henry Aaron. Aaron batting at 322 for the Braves with 17 home runs, 56 runs batted in. First pitch to Henry is inside for a ball. This is Henry Aaron's second year in the Major League. Previous to that, he had one year and a half in organized baseball. He is only 21 years old. Outfield plays him deep towards left. Whitey Ford's pitch, a change up is high. And it's two and nothing. His first year, 1953, with the Braves, was a year in which the National League pitchers tried to get him quite a bit on that same pitch 
Now, Whitey Ford just tossed him a changeup. And it was rather effective for the first month or so of the campaign in 53. Two outs, Willie Mays on first base, 5 0. The American League leads. The pitch is inside, and it's ball three, 3 0. Johnny Logan, the shortstop, is due to hit next. Into the stretch goes Whitey. 3 0 pitch, and it's ball four over the head of Henry Aaron. So Henry gets the walk. Aaron moves down to first base. Willie Mays moves on to second base. And the National League has runners on first and second with Johnny Logan, the batter. Sam Jones, of no hit fame this year, is loosening up for the National League in the bullpen in right center field. Sam Jones, who blanked the Pittsburgh Pirates earlier in the campaign, a 4 nothing no-hitter. Logan, a right-handed batter, has been above the 300 mark all year for the Milwaukee Braves of the National League. The pitch is high and it's outside, ball one. Johnny Logan, who hails from Endicott, New York, batting at 307, 10 homers, and 45 runs batted in. And he hits now with runners on first and second base. Two outs. Ford's one nothing pitch, swung out and fouled up into the upper deck on the first base side, and it's even up at ball one and strike one. Al Smith in left field replaced Teddy Williams at the start of the seventh. Mickey Mantle is still in center field for the American Leaguers, and Al Kaline is in right. Three quarters of the starting infield has been changed. Here's the 1 1 pitch, and Logan swings and fouls him on the first base side, back into the lower deck, and it's 1 and 2. The catcher, Smokey Burgess, due to hit next. The American League, five runs on eight hits. The National League, no runs, five hits. The National Leaguers have committed one error. Willie Mays on second base. Henry Aaron on first base, two outs. Logan, a right-handed batter, stands up even with home plate. The one and two pitch. Curve is swung on and looked in a short right field. Digging hard, it's going to drop in for a base hit. Here's the first National League run scoring. The peg of 30 is safe at third base. the thrill of driving in his first all-star game run. His first appearance, he drops a fly ball between Al Kaline and Bobby Avila, a looping single to right that scored Willie Mays from second base, and the score is 5-1. San Lopata is going to hit for Smokey Burgess. San Lopata of the Philadelphia Phillies. Now Stan has developed quite an unorthodox, unusual stance in which he crouches very deep, and at times it looks like he's sitting on a chair. Then he'll spring out of the crouch as the pitch comes in. Here is the first pitch, and he takes a strike. Stan Lopata batting for Smokey Burgess. Leo DeRocher going to percentages now. Lopata, a right-handed batter, replacing the left-handed swinging Burgess. A strike one count, runners on first and third. The pitch swung on and missed, and it's strike two. Sullivan and Hep are active in the American League bullpen. Strike two count on San Lopata. Stan batting at 251 for the Phillies with nine home runs, 26 runs batted in. And he hits now with runners on first and third base and two outs. The pitch is low and inside. It's one and two as Whitey Ford wastes the pitch low and inside. Ball one, strike two. Five to one. The National League finally breaks the ice here in the last half of the seventh inning. Ford looks down to the catcher, Yogi Berra. Here is a ball two. It's low. Ball two, strike two. The pitcher, John Newcomb, is due to hit next. The leadoff man, second baseman, Red Shane Dean, is in the on-deck circle. Here's the 2-2 pitch. They swing and a ground ball to the shortstop. Picked up by Pato. The play to second base. A bad throw. Run score. And it's five to two. That will be an error 
on the shortstop, Chico Carasquel. He bobbled the ball, scrambled to pick it up, and then throw badly to the second baseman, Bobby Avila. And there is the first American League error, allowing a run to score here in the last half of the seventh. The score is now 5-2. to two. A tough break for Whitey Ford as he had the side out. Gene Baker, second baseman of the Chicago Cubs. Gene Baker is batting for the pitcher, John Newcomb. Now, Newcomb is a left-handed batter, a power hitter, one of the great hitting pitchers in the National League, but again, Leo DeRocher goes to percentage as he brings in the right-handed swinging Gene Baker, who is hitting 277 for the Cubs. Runners on first and second base. Baker takes a strike as Ford... Pours his fastball right down the alley. Baker this year has 13 doubles, 6 triples, and 6 homers. 24 runs batted in. He makes his first appearance in an all-star game. The pitch is swung out. There's a high foul. It's going to be out of play on the first base side. And it's nothing and two on Baker. Gene in the hole. Batting with Johnny Logan on second base. Stan Lopata on first base. Whitey Ford. The third pitch he used by manager Al Lopez. He followed Billy Pierce to open and went three brilliant innings. Early winner worked the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and Ford came out here in the seventh. The pitch. A fastball outside. Ball one and strike two. A ball one, strike two count on Gene Baker. Batting for John Newcomb. There's a swing, a high fly ball into center field. That's in the well as Mickey Mantle comes in. He makes the catch and that retires the side. Baker flies out to Mantle in straightaway center field and for the National League in the last half of the seventh, two runs scored on two hits. One American League error and two National Leaguers are left on base. Total here in Milwaukee County Stadium in the 1955 Major League All Star Game. The American League five runs, eight hits, one error. The National League two runs, six hits, and one error. Sam Jones, who has two nicknames, Fat Sam and Toothpick Jones, because he works an entire ball game. Firmly clenching a toothpick between his teeth. A lot of guys are waiting until someday when a line drive skims through that box and see if he'll solve that toothpick. Now, with the appearance of Jones in the mound, only two pitchers have not been in action so far for the National League. A rookie left-hander from the St. Louis Cardinals, Willis Arroyo, and the giant right-hander of the Milwaukee Braves pitching staff, six foot eight inch Gene Conley. John Newcomb worked only one inning. John allowed no runs. He gave up one hit, a single to Chico Carrasquel. He struck out Bobby Avila, and he walked nobody. In the eighth inning, the American League sends up Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, and Al Kaline. Sam Jones for San Hack Chicago Cubs has worked in 20 games. He has started 19, has a record of nine victories and 10 defeats. He leads the National League pitchers in the strikeouts with 114. He also leads and walks with 105. His earned run average is 3.78. Sam Jones, formerly in the Cleveland Indian organization, was part of the Ralph Kiner deal. Here is the first pitch, and he takes a strike. Mickey Mantle, who got the American League off on the right foot in the first inning with a three-run homer that traveled around 420 feet over the center field wall. That is Mickey's only hit in this ball game. a three-run blast in the first inning. He fly to center field in the third and ground it out to the shortstop in the sixth. Well, wind up, and here's the next pitch. Curve breaks low and outside. It's one and one. Ball one, strike one. Mickey Mantle, a switch hitter, batting left-handed against the right-hander Sam Jones. Ball one and strike one. Five to two, the American League leads the National League. 
outfield deep towards right on Mickey Mantle. The pitch curve is just a little bit too low, and it's ball two. Bill Summers, Hank Sore, Dusty Bogus, Al Pollock, Ed Rungy, and Frank Sicori. The six umpires working this all-star game this afternoon. Ball two and strike one. On Mantle, Mickey stands deep in the batter's box, a slightly closed stand. That plays high off the left shoulder. The pitch is outside at ball three. So it's three and one now on Mickey, who is having one of his great years with the New York Yankees. Mickey this year has 21 home runs, and he has driven in 61 runs, batting at 318. Ball three, strike one. Sam Jones delivers a... Spike on the outside corner, letter high. Mickey was going to swing, but he held up. Pitch was good. It's ball three and strike two. Now Mantle, looking back at umpire Bill Summers, steps into the batter's box. Outfield and the infield, playing Mickey for a pull hitter around to the right. Ball three and strike two. Jones into that big rocking motion. The pitch is swung out of this. He struck him out. There is strikeout number one for Jones. He has a tremendous fastball. But a lot of the Chicago Cubs players will tell you if his curveball is on, that's his best pitch. If it's not, he gets himself in trouble. Yogi Berra, Yankee catcher, steps into the batter's box. Left-handed swinger, Yogi today, has lined the left, hit into a double play, and single to right field. Has scored one run. He takes the curve this low and it's ball one. Five to two. The American League is leading. Ball one. No strikes. Barra levels his bat across the plate watching Sam Jones. Here is the one nothing pitch and it's outside for a ball. A pair of watchful eyes on Sam Jones right now belongs to the manager of the Cleveland Indians and the manager of this American League All-Star team, Al Lopez, who had him under his guidance at one time in his baseball career. Here's the 2 nothing pitch, and it's outside ball three. Ball three and no strikes on Yogi Berra. With a right fielder, Al Kaline, kneeling down off the left of home plate. Ball three, no strikes. Five to two. American League out in front of the National League. The 3 nothing pitch is a spike and a beauty right down the alley. So it's ball three and strike one. 